What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I built this next level Iron Man helmet with voice recognition. So without further ado, hey Jarvis. That's just not this set. Open helmet. Close helmet. Let's get into it. So in this video in particular, we're going to be talking about all the electronics when it comes to wireless communication and the voice recognition. That means I'm not going to be covering how I 3D printed the helmet or how I did any of the motorization. If you want more info on that, I highly recommend you check out my video series where I build a Mark 42 helmet from A to Z. Now let's talk about this helmet a little bit. Now, if you don't recognize the design, I don't blame you. Now this helmet never appeared in a movie. This is the concept art version of the Mark 33 helmet. So it's slightly different from the final product and it has a lot more design elements from the Silver Centurion helmet from the comics, which may or may not be a hint as to a project I might be doing in the near future, but more on that another time. Now let's get into the real reason you're watching this video right now, the electronics. Now in the past I've used Arduino Nanos and I've even used ATtiny85 boards to control the electronics in an Iron Man helmet, but for this project we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Let me reintroduce you guys to the ESP32 S3 by Waveshare. If you watched my previous report Pulsar video, you might recognize this board. What I love about these guys is that they're super small, they have a ton of pins, and they're capable of wireless communication via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And that's why I'm using this in this project, because we want everything to communicate wirelessly. And thanks to this board, not only is the helmet going to be capable of voice recognition, but it's also going to be able to communicate wirelessly with the glove we built in the last video. For example, ah, we're good. And if I press that button again, helmet closes, lights turn on. And similar to the glove we built in the last video, I went ahead and designed a few PCBs for this project. Now this circuit board is a pretty simple breakout board. All we need to do is solder on the ESP32-S3, some JSTXH connectors, the USB-C port, and a right angle JST-PH connector. And once we have everything soldered on, we can start talking about the code. Now when it comes to configuring Arduino IDE and uploading the code to the ESP32, all that information is covered in detail in the Repulsor video which I'll link somewhere here. So make sure that when you're getting ready to upload the helmet code, which I'll leave in the description, you check out that video. But before we upload the helmet code, we need to go check out the code in Arduino IDE. Now this code is very similar to the code that is offered by Crashworks 3D when motorizing Iron Man helmets. So for example, we have these lines of code which control the servo positioning when the helmet is closed and open, which you can adjust manually by adjusting the degrees that the servo turn to. And on top of that, I also have these two lines of code right here for servo one and servo 2, which allow them to either stay attached, which means stay on when the helmet is closed and open, or to detach, which means the servos will turn off when the helmet is closed or open. Now in my helmet, I'm using some pretty high torque servos, meaning the faceplate can stay open just fine even when the servos are off. So that means I can disable them when the faceplate is open, that way I'm not drawing too much power from them. And lastly, we have these two lines of code right here, which control the servo speeds when the faceplate is opening and closing. Again, since my servos in this helmet are pretty high torque, they need to go at the fastest setting, which is 10, that way it's not too slow. But if you're using servos like MG90S servos, you might want to tune this down to either eight or maybe even five when the helmet is closing or opening. But with that out of the way, we can finally start uploading our helmet code to the ESP32-S3. Again, make sure you follow all the instructions from the Repulsor tutorial when uploading your code. And once all your code is uploaded to the ESP32, open up the serial monitor in Arduino IDE, and you're going to write down the MAC address. Now, if it doesn't appear in the serial monitor, you can either reset your ESP32 by pressing the reset button or either unplugging and replugging your USB cable until it appears. And if it's still not appearing in the serial monitor, make sure you have the correct baud rate selected. Now, the reason we need the ESP32's MAC address for the helmet is because the glove is going to be communicating wirelessly with this ESP32. So it needs to know specifically which ESP32 it needs to communicate with. Think of it like a digital signal signature. That's basically how it works. And once we have that MAC address, we can go back to the Repulsor code and open it up. And while looking at the Repulsor code in Arduino IDE, we can find this line of code right here, which is the MAC address for the helmet, and type in the MAC address right here. Now, once we re-upload the code into the glove, all we need to do is turn it on and press the button we installed in the last video, and we should have the helmet open and close. So with just a little bit of code, the Repulsor glove we built in the last video and this PCB 
that is all you need really to build a wireless system like this. And just a quick reminder, if you want these PCBs, they're available through the project link I'll leave in the description from this channel sponsor, PCBWay. If you don't know it already, PCBWay is the industry leader in PCB manufacturing and 3D printing solutions. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. And for the holidays, they were nice enough to send me a nice little care package with a bunch of little gifts inside. So we've got ourselves a pillow, a nice little hat, and we even have a mug. But best of all, they even sent me this nice little aluminum plaque that says PCBWay presented to Plentiful Props 3D partner of the year 2024. So thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this project and for sponsoring the channel. But with that out of the way, let's get back to this project and let's get back to voice recognition because I know that's what you guys want to see. Let me just move this aside real quick. Alrighty, voice recognition. How does it work? Well, believe it or not, it's not actual AI like in the movies. I'm actually using a voice recognition module that can work offline and it recognizes sounds and voices. Now, unlike true AI models, it's entirely dependent on recording my voice and recognizing the exact sounds I make with my voice. So I can't just say Jarvis open helmet or open the helmet Jarvis or open up the faceplate. If I change the words I use, it's not going to work. But regardless, let me show you the brains of this operation. So before I start disassembling the helmet, I want to show you guys what it looks inside. So if we take a look inside the helmet, we can see that I have a power bank in the back, which is connected with a USB cable to the PCB. And the PCB is mounted in place with this 3D printed mount I designed. And if you're interested in having your own, I'll be leaving a link to this 3D model in the description. That way you can install it in whatever projects you want. And we can also see a set of wires going from the PCB all the way down to the jaw where we have the DF robot voice recognition module. And if I take out these two screws right here, we can see that behind the voice recognition module is an entirely different PCB that I also designed. So instead of connecting the voice recognition module directly to the ESP32 that handles the servos for the helmet, I wanted to develop a system that would be completely modular. So basically we have a separate ESP32 S3, which is connected directly to the voice recognition module. And when the voice recognition module hear certain commands, it'll send data to this ESP32, which will then send data wirelessly to different parts of an Iron Man suit, like the helmet, the back, the chest, whatever. And on top of that, this PCB board for the ESP32 also has pins for JSTXH connectors, which can be connected to buttons. This way, if I want to in the future, I can build myself a remote control, which not only has the voice recognition module built into it, but also has buttons. That way I can just press and control stuff in my Iron Man suit while it's on display. Now, the only thing that this system needs to work is power, which is why there's a right angle JST connector for power on the helmet PCB. That way I can have power going from this helmet PCB down to the jaw where I have the electronics for the voice recognition. But enough about this PCB, let's start talking about the voice recognition module. Let me introduce you guys to the DF Robot Offline Language Learning Voice Recognition Sensor. This board is already set up with a 121 pre-programmed voice commands, which you can use for a whole plethora of different projects. But for this project, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Number one, we're going to be programming this to have a different wake word. Basically a wake word is a series of words or sounds which will trigger this voice recognition module to start listening for commands. That way you don't accidentally command it to do something. By default, the wake word for this board is hello robot, but we're going to be changing it to hey Jarvis. Then in a very specific order, we need to program our custom command words. Typically you can program up to 17 custom command words, but for this project video, we're only going to be programming two. And the way you would do this is by saying hello robot and then learn wake word and then repeating the new wake word you want to start using and then doing the same thing for the custom command words. And the reason why you want this to be in a specific order is because every time you learn a new command word, it's going to completely erase its memory and start from the first one. So make sure you keep track of what command words do what and in what order they need to be. And there are two things we need to make sure are properly set up on this PCB before we started installing everything. As you can see, there are two little switches on the PCB. One of them is for communication in I squared C and UART. Personally, when I wrote this code, I decided to go with UART, so make sure it's flipped to that. And then the second switch is for the speaker output. Speaker one is going to be this black box on the PCB. Now, personally, since I'm going to have sound effects be played elsewhere for the wake word and everything, that way it looks like Jarvis is actually talking with me, I'm going to set it to speaker two, that way there's no sound. And the reason why there's going to be no sound is because speaker two is this JST connector right here, so you can attach your own speaker. But since there's no speaker there, 
it's not gonna play sound. Now the ESP32 for the voice recognition module is going to need some slight setup just like the repulsor code. So again, we're going to open up Arduino IDE and we're going to look for the line of code for the helmet MAC address and type in the helmet's MAC address. Once that's done, all we need to do is upload the code onto the ESP32 and start soldering up all the connectors. If you're only using this for the voice recognition module, all you need to do is to solder up the two right angle connectors, one of which is going to be for power and the other one is going to connect directly into the right right angle connector on the voice recognition module. So make sure that the wires that you're crimping and connecting properly match up with the correct pins. And once you have all this figured out, we can start messing around with the mount. Now again, similar to the mount we designed for the PCB that controls the servos, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description to the negative version of this mount. So it's going to stick out and it's going to be like a big old rectangle. So for example, you can take this 3D model into 3D Builder, import the file of whatever helmet you're using and mesh them together and and then you can hit the subtract button while you have the helmet selected and it'll delete the rest of that big rectangle. That way it perfectly aligns to the surfaces inside the helmet. So this will make aligning and gluing this down inside the helmet an absolute breeze. Then you can take your PCB, put it down inside the mount, grab some machine screws and screw it down, and then grab some M3 screws and screw the voice recognition module on top of that. And once we plug in the power wires going from the helmet PCB into this PCB, the voice recognition module is going to get power from this four pin connector that's connected onto the PCB. And we can start programming the wake word and the command words. So without further ado, I'm going to reinstall this in the helmet and see how everything works. All right, so let me just open up the faceplate with the glove. There we go. Oh my. Take off the back plate. Yeah, put this on. Now the helmet doesn't have padding yet, so I kind of need to hold it in place to make sure it doesn't, you know, move weird. Hey Jarvis. That's your service set. Close helmet. Yeah, brother. <laughs> Open helmet. What did I have for breakfast? Gluten-free waffles, sir. That's right. So I haven't had the chance to talk about it in this video yet, but I'm also working on a sound effect module. So it's a very similar system to the voice recognition module because it has its very own ESP32 and it's connected to a sound effect board, which is called a wave trigger. And this wave trigger is pretty cool because it can play up to 14 different sounds simultaneously and it can play them polyphonically, which means it can mix the sounds appropriately so it doesn't clash or anything. Now I haven't had the chance to develop a proper PCB for this yet, but I will in the very near future. Now I won't be sharing the code or the PCB for the sound effect module just yet. I wanna share this once everything is ready and the other systems for an Iron Man suit have been developed. That way all you'll have to do is upload the code with the correct MAC addresses onto the ESP, upload the sound effects onto the SD card and you're off to the races. And as you can probably tell, I have this plugged into a voice amplifier and this is really cool because not only does it have an aux port, which this is connected to, but it also has an additional mic port, which means I can plug in a wireless communication device into this and have a wireless headset inside my helmet. So again, we're sticking with the whole modular thing we have going on with this project. Hey Jarvis. That's your sound set. Close helmet. There you have it. So if you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to let me know. And once again, I'll be leaving all the required links in the description down below for the hardware, for the code, for the PCBs, all of it. Just think of it as a holiday gift from me to you. And once again, a huge thank you to this channel sponsor PCBWay, and I will see you all in the next one.